Just give me a reason to keep my heart beating Don't worry, it's safe right here in my arms As the world falls apart around us All we can do is hold on What is up guys, DT Ninja here to bring you uh, my latest discussion on Rurikin, the Hokkaido arc. This is for Act 2, yo, Saito Hajime, Hajime Saito, the Wolf of Mibu returns, yo, this chapter was freaking epic, yo, this chapter was epic, I loved it, I loved it, so, uh, Watsuki is not afraid to you know get right into it really serious right away and then you know you got some you know uh, serious moments back in Tokyo so you you got some really interesting stuff uh, mis mystery you know a lot of death there's a lot of death in this episode so really good stuff um, I'm gonna touch on some things I noticed about the chapter uh, and also some discussion questions that I wanted to you know talk about and you know uh, touch on a little further you know and get you guys to think more okay uh, so things I noticed about the chapter well H Hakodate and that's where they are right at the beginning when we see Hakodate mountain we see this you know this this person on the mountain he's got this huge uh, I'm not exactly sure what it is some weapon on his back but yeah it was pretty crazy and then the next scene we get all of these police officers you know that are you know trying to find you know uh, any trace of what's happening and all these police officers are being killed you know uh, one after the other like first there were three then there are ten it's like a massacre going on so that was like wow it's like man this is really crazy right and then we get this first glimpse of the villain or one of them of this rebel group and this guy is standing over these stabbed swords okay there's like these swords and they're all stabbed into the ground and he's just staring you know over them he's standing over them and it's like it's as if these are the police officers uh, or even, you know, the people that stood against them and they were basically obliterated. Like, they didn't have a chance in hell. They were, this is like a graveyard in my eyes. So, that was a really crazy scene as well. So, it's like, wow, okay, Hakodate is crazy and is really dangerous. And whatever these, these group of swordsmen are, they, they mean business. You know, they, they, they're just killing people like crazy I mean it's it's crazy so um, another thing I believe there is a mystery character in the background um, now when the police officers are talking about uh, someone who has a knife and they're bringing it to a gunfight uh, I believe they're referencing to Saito let me I have the, the chapter right here, so let me reference it right here. Okay, so it says, The only thing that's different from back then is that now guns are a lot more real. Threatening us with cannon fire, huh? I see. I guess we can't leave this stuff up to the police. So, uh, he's gone. What happened? He's gone. That guy the police sent. Yeah, that swordsman police officer. Okay, so now they're talking about, you know, Saito. They're talking about Saito. Now, when, uh, obviously, they're not just police officers. Uh, they're actually military, okay? They're actually military. So that is another thing to keep in mind. Now, in the background, probably he got spooked by the cannon and scampered off. Whatever shouldn't have brought his stupid knife to this gunfight let him be okay and the guy in the background is shown and he's got you know the gun and then it shows his face up close and I'm gonna show it to you here in a moment basically I believe this is Eiji Mishima 
Eiji Mishima. Now, Eiji Mishima obviously is connected to Saito because we all know his wife, Tokio, took him in after the, you know, uh, the events of Shingetsu Village, of Shingetsu Village uh, from the Kyoto arc. And now we, you know, fast forward five years later, could he be secretly in, you know, undercover with Saito? That is something to think about. That will be uh, discussed here in a little bit. But I'm going to show you this here because this is very interesting. So take a quick look here. Alright, so as you can see, you can see a little, you know, a little view there, and you can see the original, you know, of, of AG there. So, it does beg that question. So, I thought that was interesting. Okay, next thing. Um, Saito's presence uh, can only mean that things are about to heat up. Literally heat up, guys. Literally. Going to get intense. And this mysterious rebel's... They seem to know who he is. How interesting, right? They seem to know him. So is there some connection to his past? Uh, we don't know. We're going to discuss that here in a little bit. Okay, back to Tokyo. We see Asahi reading and practicing her English, right? Her pronunciation. Uh, I guess it would be Japanese as well. But at the same time, we see Kenji who is reading a book along with her. Now, he is running in the process, so I thought that was very interesting. Um, and then, we see Ashitaro, who's obviously just eating, and he cannot concentrate at all. So, like, uh, basically, uh, Asahi is explaining how Hokkaido is, and, uh, and Ashitaro is like, I hate the cold, you know? I... I I can't eat food when it's cold. You know, it's like he has a one-track mind, always hungry. So, very uh, funny stuff. Um, and then, we get these old rivals, okay? You know, we're talking about Yutaro and Yahiko. You guys know the original rivals uh, of the Kashin style. So, we get these two, and they're interacting with each other. And this is really funny because they're 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 actually interacting and kind of arguing about money. So Yahiko <laughs> mentions uh, basically that he can't go to Hokkaido because the you know the dojo is is more lively and you know someone's got to be around to handle finances and also to you know keep up with you know everything with the dojo and Yutaro says you know I'll handle everything you know I'm I'm basically paying for it don't worry about that and he 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 further says I'll I can even look after you know Subame for you and Yaiko's like yeah right like I'd let you you know so we get this uh, little quarrel there that was pretty funny obviously you know Yaiko has you know him and uh, Subame are kind of an item so. Anyways, that was pretty neat. Um, and then, we also see Kenshin. Uh, it is mentioned that Kaoru uh, also mentions to Yaiko that <clears throat> Kenshin cannot go through another death match, right? Because he cannot no longer use the Hiten Mitsurugi style as he once could, right? So, uh, this leads me to believe that others will show up in... The, you know, in this journey to Hokkaido, okay, maybe, it, maybe it'll be Hakodate, uh, you know, but another person will show up and help him out, or even another person will join them on their journey, so, very interesting stuff, so yeah, that's what I noticed about the chapter, and obviously the very end, right, the epic duel, the rematch, Yo, I cannot wait for the next chapter. So overall, the chapter was epic. I, I loved everything about it. There was really nothing I could complain about. You know, it was really perfect. I loved it. So uh, let's get to the discussion questions. Okay, could it really be him? Eishi Mishima. 
in Hakodate. Is he placed as one of Saito's agents? Okay, I'm going to show you this picture one more time because now we have a fuller picture with some anime scans as well. So I want you to take a look at this and you can, you know, decide what you think. But look at those eyes because those eyes look so similar. And not only that, when Saito enters the fray, you know, enters the battle and basically says, don't get cocky, you knaves. Uh, he goes out and, you know, he, he, he has his Gatotsu ready and he's about to fight him. And whose face is shown? The same exact one. The same exact one that I showed you before. It's in another, you know, view, but it's the same person. Okay? It showed the same person again. Maybe that is Eiji. I think it is Eiji. Okay, guys, so that's pretty interesting, right? Um, now, why do I think this? Well, um, I think that it's more about following in his brother's footsteps, okay? He, he really, uh, you know, really respected, loved his brother, the one that died for him, protecting him. He probably wants to be just like him. I'm, I'm sure he wants to be just like his brother. I'm sure, uh, you know, Saito... Uh, would definitely, you know, take him up on that request if he were to ask him. So, I mean, he is a police officer, right? So, it's possible that he even, you know, trained him. You know, we don't know. It's been five years, right? So, very interesting stuff. And also, uh, there is a downside. Maybe Tokio wouldn't let him. I've thought of that, right? Tokio would be his adopted mother, but would she let him go? Probably not. You wouldn't think so, right? But he is, you know, older now. Before, he was probably... He might have been older than Yaiko. He might have been a little older. Maybe 13 or 14. So now he's got to be at least 18. So, yeah. I'm thinking that maybe he's young... You know, he's old enough now to, you know, uh, go off on his own almost. And if, if you know, Saito's there and obviously that connection there, I just really think that's the reason. But like I said, you know, Tokio might have been against it. Let's see, uh, next one. Who are these mysterious swordsmen at Hakodate? Okay, who are they? Uh, they call themselves Kinkaku Heki, or the swordsmen's weapons. Okay, what is their goal? Okay, who are they? Um, they seem to be rather knowledgeable about uh, the Shinsengumi, obviously, because they know who Saito is. So that, that caught my eye, and that was interesting. Okay, not only that, but they seem to be knowledgeable of swords and guns, because they have... Uh, technology, okay, because one of those, one of those things is a mechanical monster. I mean, that thing is crazy. I gotta, t I gotta give you guys a look at this, because this thing is freaking crazy. Take a look. Crazy. I think it's called, like, the Strange Blade or something like that, but, yeah, anyway, that one is crazy. And then the guy who wields it has the sunglasses, you know, kind of like... Uh, yeah, we're just, we're just gonna kill all of you. And then there's the, the guy with, like, the crazy eyes. Now, this guy has got some freaky-looking eyes. I mean, this guy has some evil-looking eyes. I mean, they're, like, spiraling. And he's the guy that goes and, you know, says, you know, we show no mercy. We kill everyone in our path. You know, we'll, we'll massacre anyone. So it's like they have no morals at all. They they I don't I don't even know what their goal is, but like they are out there. They're out there. So the ending of part one for the chapter was the most freaking epic thing. Yo, yo. At the very end, okay, so we see all the swordsmen's weapons, okay, in, in full view. We see them. There's like five of them. I already explained. There's like a monster mechanical, uh, you know, he's kind of like, a, you know, 
basically he, he's a creation right of one of those swordsmen and then there's another guy uh, who has a hood over there's the guy with the sunglasses and then there's the guy with you know the spiral deranged eyes and then yo out of nowhere there's an, a huge explosion and coming out of the flames is freaking Hajime Saito yo that was freaking epic so I had this I had this page colored uh, specifically for this uh, you know video and I wanted to share it with you guys because it's so awesome it's so awesome uh, my friend Chris did it and he does such incredible work so take a look at this this is really awesome So, now that Saito has joined the battle, okay, that, that was his official joining, uh, you know, entering the fray, the battle, uh, will he accept the invitation to join the swordsman's weapons, or will he just fight them off one by one? Now, when he first goes in, he's like, don't get cocky, you knaves, and then he explains how he's been investigating for the last, year, like, five years or so on a group that has been causing trouble, and now he figures out who it is, so now he has more information, but now they have information on him, because that guy stated, who are you, and he's like, I'm Goro Fujita, you know, a police officer, and... Basically, he says, but that's not a dog's, you know, an alias for a dog. That sounds more like a wolf. So they figure it out. He's already, they already know he's Hajime Saito. So that was interesting. And I, I explained that before. But this leads into this invitation. Now, let me, let me read this for you because this is interesting. So, so basically, he says, friend or foe? At the start of the trial that now faces us, I welcome thee, O oh strong swordsman. Okay, so if they're going to massacre him, as they state, as they can massacre anyone, why would they welcome him, uh, you know, to Hokkaido or to Hakodate? Why would they welcome him like this? Uh, to me, it sounds like the trial as in joining the group. Do you want to join us? You're a strong swordsman. Uh, we know who you are. We want you as part of our group. That's what it sounds like to me. Okay? Because I just don't see a trial as in defeating one man. There's five of them, right? I don't think that would be a trial, right? The trial would be uh, Saito fighting all of them, you know, by himself. But, um... Anyway, that's how I think. Uh, so this leads into question number four. Now that Saito has joined the battle, will he accept the invitation to join the swordsman's weapons? Uh, or will he just fight them all one by one? Now, obviously, he was getting ready to fight them one by one. So there could be two options, I think. One could be uh, he could flat out refuse them, right? Or he could join them. But it would be a way to infiltrate their organization or group, okay? A way to infiltrate and learn about who these swordsmen really are, okay? So this would be a way to gather intel and also to fool the enemy and catch them off guard when they least expect it, okay? Uh, so that's what I think that possibly could happen. That's the first thing. Now, uh, if he refuses, it seems like there's going to be a death match regardless. But uh, I don't think he would mind to fight them all, but he's only one man, so it would definitely be a difficult one. Uh, but I think it's clear that we all know that Saito lives by one principle of justice. We all know this. Ak Sok San, right? Slay evil immediately. Okay, and this is the one truth of justice that he lives by every day, and he said he's going to live by it until the day he dies, right? If you guys remember when he fought Usui, the blind sword, uh, when Shishio was, you know, trying to take over the country, he defeated him, right? And at the end of the battle, okay, I have reference to it right here. At the end of the battle, okay, 
here is the battle right here, okay? He, you know, he does the zero gatotsu and he cuts him right through him, uh, through the turtle shell, okay? And then, as they do their talk here, basically, he says, how will you... Uh, you know, carry this justice through the Meiji era. How long will you hold on to it? And at the end, it says right here, it says, uh, I'll read it for you. It says, Mu Ron Shine Made. Okay? Mu Ron Shine Made, which means until I die. So basically, this is something that uh, you know that is very ingrained in Hajime Saito's you know way of the sword right it's it's just how he lives every day as a swordsman so i don't see him actually joining for any you know personal gain here the government is strong but it's not just that it's it's that if evil uh you know is actually taking over uh, he's going to be there to, you know, eradicate it. That is his way of justice. And that was one thing, you know, th that was the reason why he went to Kyoto in the first place, right? Uh, overthrowing the government, that's obviously not going to be in, you know, something he wants. Even though he fought on a different side than Kenshin, they do share the same uh, brand of justice, you know, slaying evil immediately. So that is something that I really think that you know, holds true about Hajime Saito. So, those are my thoughts on Hajime Saito. Let's move on. The next part we're going to talk about is about Kenshin, uh, you know, specifically. So, in the chapter, uh, we get this scene where uh, Kenshin and, uh, is, is looking at, at the laundry and it flies out and he has to go get it. So he's walking and there's a serious scene where Yaiko and Kaoru, they're both talking to each other about Kenshin and, you know, his current state. And you see this flashback of Megumi and she states, The damage done to your body is fortunately still slight. Judicious use should allow you to continue to wield your blade for the time being. However, no matter how careful you choose to be, within the next Four to five years, you will lose the ability to use the Hiten Mitsurugi style. So this is key right here. Okay, and then he says, "Are you? You are all going to Hokkaido to find your dad, not to fight." And she says, "But still, he's still going to try to help people who are suffering in Hokkaido. He knows she knows he's going to use his Hiten Mitsurugi style, so she's worried." Right? It's interesting because the end shows Yahiko and he lies to Kenshin, right? He says, uh, Kaoru refuses to let me handle and, uh, you know, take charge of the jo dojo. She doesn't trust me. So he says, test me. Test me before you leave for Hokkaido. So this makes me wonder is this another, is there a reason behind it? I really think there is. So, um, I personally think that, uh, you know, Yaiko could join them. Uh, and this leads into the question. So, number four, uh, now, I'm sorry, number five, uh, Kaoru realizes Kenshin cannot fight as he once could, and certainly no more death matches. They would shorten his life again, and so she would be worried, as I stated. So, who do you guys think will show up in order to provide uh, aid to Kenshin? Now, I'm talking about, you know, help, uh, you know, alongside him. Who do you guys think? Um, me, personally, I, like I said, I believe possibly Yaiko might join them. Uh, but that, that was my last choice. My first choice is Aoshi Shinomori. My first choice is Aoshi Shinomori. Aoshi Shinomori. Now, uh, one of the reasons why I believe Aoshi is because they have a history. Okay, they're rivals. They fought many times. They fought twice, right? They had two two duels. But they're both incredible. Uh, he's younger. He's definitely younger than he, you know, than Kenshin is, and he hasn't fought as many battles as him. But um, I'd say that uh, Aoshi, because there is a special 
chapter at the end of volume 22 and he was the one that told Kenshin that Saito is in Hokkaido so I translated this chapter this special chapter and these scans for you guys to see uh, so you can see what I'm talking about so I want you to take a look at this and you can see uh, the scan All right, guys, so you can see exactly how, you know, this arc is now, you know, shaping because originally it was kind of left, you know, possibly it could continue because we see Saito in Hokkaido, he's doing something. So the, another, more story could be developed and hence the reason for the Hokkaido arc. It's not the only reason, but it is one of the major reasons. So very interesting stuff. Like I said, I believe Aoshi Shinomori is going to uh, provide help. Whether Kenshin you know, asks for it or not, I think he's going to show up in one way or another. Okay, number two. Sojiro Seita, and I know I talked about these in the last discussion, but I'm going to keep mentioning them uh, because I really feel that they are going to show up. Now, this is one, one of the reasons is because the way uh, Sojiro decided to live uh, his life, okay? After d his defeat, uh, he goes on and says, well, Shishio was, was wrong. You were right, Kenshin. Uh, your way was right and he's like well if you decide you know a battle is not so simple to decide one person's life no we w if if that were the case you know we would learn we wouldn't we would go through life without learning anything at all so what you got to do is live your life every day that's how you decide for yourself so he lives the way Kenshin does right he becomes a wanderer you know, Sojiro becomes a wanderer. That's why I want him to be uh, in this arc. I want him to show up. Not only that, he's freaking talented. He's really talented. He's the only one that ever snapped Kenshin's sword. Okay, he snapped the Sakabato in half, and he was faster than him. His Shikuchi is faster than Godlike Speed. So, imagine how strong and you know powerful, uh, talented, you know skilled Sojiro would be. Obviously, he probably didn't you know practice his sword skills, but you know he's older now. You know it would be epic to see him again. Um, my third choice is Yaiko himself, and that leads into the next discussion question. Uh, why uh, did Yaiko request Kenshin to test out his strength in a duel once again? Uh, what will the result reveal to him? Okay, I secretly think that he is worried about Kenshin. Okay, he's worried about Kenshin, and he wants to test him out. Of course, this is something he's always wanted to do again. But the real reason behind it is I think after the result, he's going to realize that they really need him. And he's going to join them on the, the journey to Hokkaido. So that's what I think, guys. Uh, I cannot wait to see, you know, the duel between Kenshin and Yaiko. So I really feel that he is going to be alongside Kenshin. That's my feeling. I really hope that's the the case. So, But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed my discussion. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. And I'll see you guys in the next one.